Hi, and welcome to Different Leaf, a show for new and experienced cannabis consumers. I'm Britt Smith. Have you ever walked into a cannabis dispensary and said to yourself, I'll just stick with what I know? Or maybe you've wandered in and said, where do I even begin? There's flour of all kinds, pre-rolls, gummies, mouth sprays. There's targeted effects pills, seltzers, tinctures. Like, I don't know, just sell me some weed. If you've ever been overwhelmed with the seemingly endless choices at your local cannabis store, you're not alone. That's why this week we're going to demystify the buying experience. In 2022, research showed that branding and strain type, like indica versus sativa or daytime versus nighttime, were the most important things to consumers. Those labels were how we were gauging what kind of experiences we might get. But this year, THC percentage and price have been the new leading factors when we purchase legal weed. In fact, data shows that 60% of cannabis consumers consider THC potency the leading factor when purchasing cannabis. And honestly, none of those factors, branding, THC level or price, tell us much about the kind of experience that we might have. In fact, there are plenty of other things that we should be considering when picking what to try at our local pot shop. This episode, we're going to talk about how to purchase cannabis like a professional so that we can learn how to really hone in on our most enjoyable experiences and try new products without breaking the bank. First, we're going to be flies on the wall at a staff meeting at one of Boston's most popular dispensaries, Rooted In on Newbury Street. We'll see what factors into the dispensary staff's selection and therefore our selection when it comes to what we see on the shelves. We're going to chat about the kinds of questions that newer and curious consumers might want to ask when they get to a dispensary register. And we'll learn about the best ways to test your local cannabis options for cheap or free so that you can find new products that you've never tried before without spending all your worldly wealth. Finally, we'll put all that knowledge to the test and go out for a conscious buying experience. We'll be right back to talk about buying cannabis like a professional with the team from Rooted In. Whether it's your first time in a dispensary or you're a regular who's looking to try something new, there are a lot of things to consider when you're buying legal weed. Beyond just the THC levels, which are continuously rising, and the prices, which are continuously falling, if you're looking to smoke or vape some cannabis flower, we can now get really picky with what we want. It's not just your friend with a Ziploc baggie anymore. Now we can ask indoor or sun-grown. We can pick who we want the profits to go to, nationwide companies with tried and true products or minority-owned local businesses with craft selections. Despite what the dispensary menu labels it as, we've gone beyond understanding cannabis as just indica makes us sleepy and sativa makes us giggly. We can now ask what are the dominant terpenes in a cannabis flower, the molecule that gives us a hint about the sort of experiences we might have. And we can ask about the ratio of cannabinoids in a product and seek out a balance of THC and CBD. So where do we begin with judging and picking the best flower for ourselves? Let's chat with the staff at one of Boston's most popular dispensaries, Rooted In, about how they decide what cannabis is worthy of their shelf space. What do the professionals think makes good cannabis? And what should we be looking for when we're trying to pinpoint our perfect smoke? You've got to get a lot of pictures that are sent to you, and we really just want to hear about how you whittle it down and choose who goes on the shelves. And I guess from watching your process, I'm hoping to learn how to better choose my own cannabis when I go into a store, and um, hopefully the listeners can learn something too. That's great. Let me start by asking about the range of prices that you guys have for cannabis flower. What is the high and the low price for an eighth at your store? Our low is 20 and our high is 70. Now, why is there such a big difference? Is the premium priced stuff more full of cannabinoids? Does it have more tack on the label? Which for our listeners is total active cannabinoids. Honestly, the the tack is high, so it shouldn't sit, but the price. And because we have cannabis that is like, you know, similar tack, 
but for a lower price range. So it's like a it's a direct competitor. And, you know, if it was me, I'm going to go with the cheaper one just to save a couple of dollars, especially if the tack is similar. I personally think we should come down on a little bit or, or try to uh, ask them to come down on just because I feel like it's really high and it's, it's starting to sit now, if you ask me. That's interesting because, you know, with our market on Newberry Street, you would think that we've got a lot of disposable income here that they would go for high tech and premium price point. But I guess Newberry's no different. They're going for high tech at the best price point. Yeah. Yeah. They're smart. I think we just recently brought on like some $20 flour, which I didn't think we would ever go that low on Newberry Street, but we yeah. did. How's that? How's the $20 flour moving? It's moving well. How's the tack on the, on the $20? It's really low. That was on here, was that like 22%? So what I'm learning here is that sometimes flour with high levels of total active cannabinoids, or TAC, will be priced at $40. Other times, some will be priced at $70. The difference isn't about the level of cannabinoids. It's about who's growing it. They're being made by either a big operation or a small locally owned operation. So it's about who you want your money to go to. If you see something that, that's priced a lot lower at a tier like $20, it's likely to actually have less cannabinoids, which is fine for some people. So tip number one, pick your price point accordingly. For those who want a more noticeable physical effect, the mid to higher tier prices may be worth it. And for those who want a more noticeable effect and want to support local growers, the top tier price is where you'll be. Other than looking at the THC levels and the TAC, the total active cannabinoids, how do our dispensaries know what's good out there and what they want to sell us? Well, it turns out they try before we buy. Most stores that you go to will test out the flower from growers that align with their mission, like minority owned companies, and they'll consider things like whether it's indoor or sun grown and whether that's been more popular with consumers so far. What about uh, like other options that we're not that we don't currently have on the menu. Have any has anybody tried anything that we should you know consider getting out there? I'm not sure if this fits in the flower category, but under pre rolls, not sure if they also do flower. But there is this sun grown company called Aruna. They are also in the Berkshires. They are also Desi owned and minority owned business as well. If we wanted to kind of look into that, I have tried some of their uh, flower. It's been pretty good in the pre rolls I've had. Uh, Aruna, I had tried as well. I did like it. Sungrown Cannabis has moved uh, pretty pretty good in our store. So um, that's definitely something that I'm going to take a look at. Way back in the day when we went to uh, some type of conference and uh, Black Buddha was there. I think they're minority owned or women owned. But um, yeah, I think they that's someone that we might want to also look into. You were talking about, you know, we should try this flower. We should discuss this flower. It was because you personally had tried them and you had enjoyed them. Adele, what what was it like that you liked about the ones that you, you wanted to um, bring to the table at Rooted It? So for me, I'm actually not that big of a pre-roll smoker. I'm actually big on more like full flour. So I actually only tried their pre-rolls and I had a really good time with that. So usually if I like the pre-rolls, I'm more inclined to try like the full flower. So I got really intrigued with Aruna. And I think what I had from them was a really fun name. It was Strawberry Fritter. Uh -huh. They had some really fun names that I'm like, oh, I'm really curious about like, what these are. I know they have the Gary Payton as well. Yeah, Should that's a really good one. And I think too, the circles that I have been in have really just enjoyed. It's also my friends recommendations. That's kind of how I bring it in because then it's like, it's not just my personal feeling yeah. like on it cannabis is for everyone right so i like to hear what other people kind of have enjoyed about it too in a group setting so then kind of bring that into our space too so yeah. someone else can kind of enjoy justin what about you um for me i'm big on flour so whenever i break weed up and it depends on how it breaks up i can usually tell how it's going to smoke you know, some people have different preferences, but I don't like, like, fluffy weed. I like my weed to be very dense and thick and hard to break up. Mm. And sometimes when uh, I've noticed that, like, the fluffy weed, it feels kind of uh, uh, fake almost. And then when you smoke it, it's usually very chemically and it doesn't taste right. Mm -hmm. but that's just my opinion. Um, so usually I look for that thick cloud smoke when I, you know, puff it. And uh, that usually gives me a really good indication. And then... 
it's how I feel after I'm done smoking it. And if I feel like, you know, down, because I smoke a lot of weed. So <laughs> if, if it gets me, then it's good weed. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> how about you, Holly? Personally, like what I'm looking for, Justin hit on a lot of it. Um, and Adele mentioned it too. Um, when you open up the buds and you look at it, if it's larfy, like if it is, has like extra air and it isn't dense, you know, when you break it up, when you, when you feel the stickiness of it, the terpenes, you know, like, how does it smell? Um, you know, there's a lot that I'm kind of going through my little criteria when mm -hmm. I'm looking at it. Yeah. I think that also it's more of like where, who's who and where it's coming from too. It's not just about the product, but mm. that's obviously the biggest piece. Yeah. And that's tip number two, find a store with menu options with respect to who grew it, big or small companies, how they grew it, indoor or sun-grown, and maybe even pick a store that allows you to see and smell the flower before you buy. Of course, there aren't many places that let you open up the jars and smell the bud, let alone touch it, but thankfully some dispensaries do have these little see-through cubes with samples of bud inside that you are allowed to look at and sniff to check out whether you think it's what you want. Then you can narrow it down to the right price, the right company, indoor or sun-grown, and you can see how the bud appears as well. Is it loose and fluffy or is it tight and dense? Does it smell good to you? Because the nose knows, you know? And my little bonus tip here for flower smokers, I pick a store where there's also a points system. And every time I buy my regular go-to cannabis, I gain points towards money off my next purchase. Last week, I got enough points for a totally free pre-roll. And that's how you try a new strain without spending a dime. If you're into edibles, tinctures, or drinks, the buying experience is also a lot different to how it was just a few years ago. Now you can buy edibles based on how fast you want the effects to come on. You can pick targeted effects like partying or sleep or sex. And you can consider what season you're in and what flavors you want to be tasting. So I asked one of Rooted In's founders, Brian, what he considers when he's picking edible offerings for the store. Brian, when you thinking about bringing products to the team to consider what do you consider to be some of the top things you look for well i always tell people i'm a novice like smoker so when i'm looking it's typically on the edible side or the tincture side and things like that i leave the concentrates and the flour to the rest of the team uh -huh. um, they have a better palate than i do um, but all the brands that we work with are solid on the potency and effect and we try them out before we bring them on the shelves to make sure that that's the case. So one of the things that I'm always looking for is um, flavor. Yeah. Because I always tell people, they're all going to get me where I want to go. I want to enjoy the ride while I'm getting there. <laughs> um, so I want to make sure that the, you know, the flavor is right because I'm confident that the effect and the feeling that is offered will also um will be but we will be where I want it to be. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So you guys really as a team um sort of make up a better buying crew than one single buyer by themselves. There's a lot of dispensaries I've talked to that have a buyer, but uh it seems that you guys can all sort of bring different perspective to the table, which is cool. I was just going to say that I think that that's the best way to do it because at the end of the day what I like might not be what our customers like what Holly likes might not be what our customers like and at the end of the day we're here for the customers yeah. and we have to make sure that what we're bringing to market and putting on our shelves is not just something that one person likes but something that many different people will like and enjoy and just make sure that we have something for everyone whether it's on a price range or a type of product or what have you we always try to make sure that we have a varied menu that can speak to anyone's budget anyone's tastes or anyone's interests. Hmm, I love that. And that's tip number three. Try the flavor of your chosen edible before you purchase it. How? Pop-up events. Brands often come into the store for a day or a few days to hand out non-infused versions of their edibles or drinks so that you can taste their offerings before buying and committing to a whole pack. But if you want the fully loaded experience, keep an eye out for local consumption events. Oftentimes, activists, entrepreneurs, and organizers will be putting together 